That's awesome. Yeah. All right, we're going live here. All right, just want to welcome everybody to um, Light the Bay's 10 at 10. We've got Pastor Sam Benson here with us again, and um, we're doing a little bit of a workaround because Zoom is having some issues connecting with Facebook today. So um, I have been called by our media team, the master of the workaround. Yes. So what I've got is my iPad recording my computer that is on Zoom. And uh, Pastor Benson's in Florida. We are in California. Uh, but um, the Word of God is, is, is good. The Word of God is right. The Word right. of God does not return void. Uh, those of you that are watching that are jumping on right now, just uh, let us know that you're on. And um, the audio may be a little bit off today. Um, if you want to uh, see it without the audio being off, um, uh, you can watch it on YouTube here in probably about an hour, and that will have good sound involved. Um, but let's just welcome uh, Pastor Sam. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we are going to uh, let the Reverend cut loose and give us some revelation today. Father, we thank you for today. We just declare that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Lord, we declare uh, that blinders are lifted in the name of Praise. Jesus. Uh, those that have been walking in spiritual darkness, light will, will invade and, and just take over. And I thank you, Father God, for the revelation of your word. In Praise Jesus' God. name. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm going to do my best during this video to um, not talk as much and let Pastor Sam do the talking. That way we have um, a little bit better sound system running. So um, yesterday we, we uh, had a great time and just talking with Pastor Sam and um, man, my heart was encouraged. I know that, uh, Peggy was in the other room. She was encouraged uh, of, of just the word that came out. Um, but Pastor Sam's got a word for us today. I've, I've already um, gotten a little bit of a preview. And uh, so, uh, Pastor Sam, what's on your heart for today? Thank you, uh, Pastor Jason. And again, hello to the people of Light the Bay. Glad that you are going to be able to join us and be a part of this moment, we're, we're doing this, connecting our two coasts, the uh, East Coast, the West Coast, and we're doing it in a split second of time. It doesn't even take a second for our connection to take place, and we're interact interacting together in the now. Let me go back to that word released in January, which was the new is in the now. That's based on what Isaiah said. Behold, I do a new thing, even now it springs forth. So the new thing that God wants to do is always present tense. But I want to bring to you a present tense application of something that took place historically 2,000 years ago. That's the life of Jesus, his death on the cross on our behalf, his burial into the tomb. But then on the third day, he rose from the dead. And the truth of the matter is that even though the cross was history, Jesus is not still being sacrificed. Yeah. Jesus is not still being wounded for our transgressions. He did that once, mm -hmm. and he did that for all, is what the scripture says. Yeah. Jesus is not in the tomb. Jesus is, is not hoping that someday he'll be set free from the power of the grave. Jesus already came out of the grave. We, we sing it at Easter time, up from the grave, he arose. Mm -hmm. So the grave is not present tense. That's past tense. But on the third day when Jesus rose from the dead, God released a whole force of his power that not only happened in the body of Jesus in order for us to experience the full measure of what his salvation is all about, let me just remind you of what the scripture says, that Paul, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says 
that the gospel that he preached, he received from God. He didn't get it from a man. He received this from God. This is what he says. The gospel is how Christ died according to the scripture and was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead according to the scripture. In other words, God is putting the validity and the truthfulness and the veracity of his word behind the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. And what happened is that resurrection, according to the scripture, is not something that happened, but it's something that has continued to happen from the moment it was released in and through and for the body of Jesus, and then ultimately for us who are his followers. Let me remind you of what the book of Romans says, chapter 8. If the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwells mm -hmm. in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also make alive your mortal body mm -hmm. by the spirit of God, because of the spirit of God. So if you're a follower of Christ, if you've given your life to the Lord, you are a believer. And that believer in Christ has the presence of the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Resurrection is one of those now happenings. Resurrection is something that we need to experience now. And we will experience it. And I'm going to invite you to join me in experiencing that. Let me give you a little understanding. Resurrection, a little different word, but it simply means revival. So there was a revival in the grave, or it means simply to live again. Mm -hmm. So revival broke out in the tomb that Jesus was buried in, and the consequence of that revival is that he came up from the dead and lives forever. He never will die again because resurrection is working in him. He died once and for all, but now he lives, and he lives for us. He lives to make the grace of God known to each one of us. So this revival of this revitalization, this resurrection is for someone or something. It can apply to either a human, or it can apply to an, an event or an, uh, an obvious need. There can be life released by God into not only your body to keep you alive, keep you healthy, keep you strong, but you can also have the resurrection of your dreams. You can have the resurrection of your visions. In other words, maybe you're sitting in your home today or looking at this by way of a laptop, or you're looking at your personal device and you're seeing what I'm saying and you're hearing what I'm saying, and you're saying, is it possible that my dreams can live again? I say, yes, in Jesus' name, your dreams will live again, and they will live again through the power of resurrection, the revitalization, the revival of the dream, the vision, the assignment, the purpose, the plan that God has for you. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. There are plans for good and not evil. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. But plans that are good, not evil, to give you a future, future tense, future and give you a hope, expectation, and anticipation. I'm saying to you right now in Jesus' name that we are moving into the time when the church celebrates the resurrection of Christ from the dead, mm -hmm. and there is no natural circumstance that will keep resurrection power from being released, and there is no spiritual enemy or adversary that is strong enough to be able to defeat resurrection, the life-giving power of God. So whether it's your dreams, your visions, your hope, your aspirations, maybe there's a miracle that's necessary in your family. Maybe you need to see something take place in your children or your own personal life, your own physical body. Maybe you need to have something be raised to life in your mind or in your emotions or in your spiritual being. I'm here to tell you today that we are in the age of the resurrection, and the resurrection is now. I'm going to release the power of the resurrection in just a moment, but I want to give you some more encouragement. When we talk about resurrection, we have to think of it this way. 
it means not just the revitalization where maybe there was a flicker. No, this was something that they used the word imbue. That word imbue means to permeate. It also means to saturate. It means also to soak. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus, it's possible for your mind to be soaked with and saturated with the life-giving power of God your right mind can come back to you. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That spirit of love and that spirit of power and that spirit of a sound mind is the resurrection spirit. You need to let God revitalize your thought processes and stop thinking in terms of fear. Let the power of God set you free from that and the resurrection life of Jesus bring you up out of it so that you can experience the full and great measure of God's goodness. I'm hurrying, but let me just take it a little bit further. Not only can your body be saturated, your mind be saturated, your emotions, your feelings can be saturated with the resurrection power of God. No more of that, I'm down in the dumps. It's good morning, Lord. I'm ready to live my day full of your energy, full of your life, your power and fulfill your purpose for me today. I want to make a difference through your presence and power that's in me. And then your spirit can be saturated. I mean, everything about you can be saturated with the life of God. Let me give you one other thought though, and this is what I want you to do with me as well. I want you to understand that when there's an enemy target that armies have identified, they call in the Air Force, and the Air Force does what is called saturation bombing. In other words, they permeate that target with explosive power that destroys the enemy and the enemy's stronghold. Uh, I could get a little bit happy when I'm talking about this, but I just want you to hear this. The enemy has tried to gain a foothold in our world. The things that are happening naturally are significant. I'm not saying that there isn't significance to the natural event or the, the kinds of things that are happening to men physically or families physically, but I'm talking about a spiritual enemy that goes along with this, and it's a fear, a fear of failure, a fear of uncertainty, a fear of death. This whole thing is demonic in every way. I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. God has not prescribed the judgment or the wrath of God for us. That's this right. is not about God doing anything to you or to me. This is about God saying, let me show you the remedy to what the enemy has released. And we can take the resurrection power of Christ, the spirit of God that's in us, and out of our mouth begin to proclaim the power of the resurrection of Jesus against fear, fear will not live in the face of the power of God. Fear has to die. Fear cannot stand in the face of the living God. He says that fearfulness is not even in his heaven. There is nobody that fears in heaven. Therefore, it shouldn't be fearful for us to live on this earth. We have the resurrection. We have the hope. We have the power of God. It's available to you and to me now. I want you to also determine that between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, so the 5th of April through the 12th of April, that every day you're just going to keep speaking resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. I release the resurrection of Jesus into the environment of this earth. And in the name of Jesus, I release people from fear through the power of the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. And I also release the power of God to quicken and saturate my mind, my emotions, my body, my spirit, and I will be revitalized. You're not coming out of this weaker. You're coming out stronger. You're not headed to a, a, a devastating end. You have the opportunity to experience the greatness of a living God who brought your Savior and my Savior out of the grave in triumph. Do you know that there was so much victory that happened on Resurrection Day, the first Resurrection Day, that the Bible says that Jesus wasn't the only one raised from the dead that day. 
but it says many body of the saints that were dead came out of their graves and walked through the streets of Jerusalem. Read the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll see the power of the resurrection, and they record the fact that people who had died prior to Jesus, with hope in Jesus, came out of the grave and walked the streets of Jerusalem. So not only did he rise, but people rose at the same time. The same power is in you. Now it's time to start thinking and speaking and living resurrection, new life. And now resurrection is released in Jesus' name. Power is released now in Jesus' name. And we come against through saturated bombings in the spirit. We're just going to devastate the enemy of fear in the name of Jesus. And we say, fear, you have no place. You will not torment. You will not bring anguish of mind and heart. Jesus said to us, let not your heart be troubled. We take Jesus' word for it. We will be free from a troubled heart because we know and experience the power of the resurrection. Now, if you can see my face, please don't run from it, but look into my eyes. I release you from the fear and torment of the enemy and the anxiety and the worry that has gripped your mind. And I fill your mind now with life-giving power, thoughts that are alive. I fill your emotions with feelings that are full of life. I fill your body with the resurrection of Jesus, life-giving power from Christ on high. And I also declare that you are alive, quickened, made whole, according to the word of God. The spirit of the resurrection is working in you now. Keep it going throughout this week. And let's just blast this whole atmosphere that we're in with the life-giving declaration of the resurrection of Christ. Will you do that with me? Keep it up every day. Don't stop what we've experienced now. You can keep going with it because the new, the new expression this generation needs of the resurrection of Jesus is in the now. And you're in the now. So let's exercise. Let's live. Let's enjoy that power, resurrection power together. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Sam, for being with us today. What a great word that was. Um, we speak life into every part of our, our lives. And then yeah. we speak life, the resurrection life of God, into all areas of our county. Uh, you yep. know, I was just yep. challenged with uh, this morning by the Spirit of God that I have authority yes. over Pittsburgh because I am a pastor of Pittsburgh or a yep. believer in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you're a gatekeeper too, Pastor. You're the gatekeeper of that community. Yeah, so I, I am now changing how I am confessing, speaking into the atmosphere. Um, Very good. I can, through my release of resurrection words, I can actually change the curve of the coronavirus yes. Amen. in Amen. areas in which I have influence. So one Thank thing God. that we have been doing, and, and, and really it started with Pastor Peggy, um, but now you know I'm picking it up. I think others are starting to pick it up. That no one that is a part of our campus, so not just like the Bay, but also the churches that are on our like the Bay campus. Yes. Yes. No one that is a part of our campus will catch the virus. Amen. Um, and that we are safe and we are strong in the Lord. And so now we're just releasing that word that in this city, in the surrounding cities, in this East Bay County, we are saying that the curve is going down in the name of Jesus. And Amen. we declare that over this place. The healing power of God is strong in this present. So we're even seeing um, and starting to get back praise reports of praise God. people that have been watching the ten at tens or been watching the Wednesday night live or the Sunday Sunday morning live. We're starting to get reports of people saying that they're being healed while watching it. That's great. And so uh, just know that what Pastor Sam has released. Um, has just as much power with him releasing it into your ear channels 
Mm -hmm. as it would be if he was standing right in front of you and had his hand laid on your head. That's right. Because like the woman with the issue of blood, when she heard about Jesus, she reached out and touched him. It wasn't a release of his faith. It was a release of her faith. So your release of faith on the words that have been spoken by pastors mm -hmm. him in mm -hmm. agreement Man, there's power in agreement. Now, so Amen. we can really we can go for for hours. Without um, a doubt. But but um, we want to go ahead and, and wind it up now. Um, enjoy. I know that I've enjoyed having Pastor Sam on. Uh, if you'll put down in the comments somewhere uh, the that you've enjoyed it, what you've gotten out of this session, um, and then we're going to invite Pastor Sam and Sherry to come back in weeks to come. And so just stay tuned on that. And uh, we say, have a good day, everybody. God bless. God bless.